The supply of modern weapons from the United States and its allies to Ukraine has so far not been able to stem the Russian army. The U.S. has now expressed its desire to send fighter planes. The United States and its allies continue to look for ways to upgrade the Ukrainian Air Force, including training pilots before potentially supplying Kyiv with Western-made fighter jets. Two senior U.S. military officials revealed this at the annual Aspen Security Forum in Colorado. Meanwhile, U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall speaking at the same security conference about the U.S. military seeking to retire the iconic A-10 Warthog ground attack jet was asked directly, why don't we give the A-10 to Ukraine? Pathetical thought, why don't we give those A-10s to Ukraine? Uh, General Brown addressed that question this morning about what a fighters Ukraine might might uh, be interested in. That's largely up to Ukraine. I think, as as CQ pointed out, there are a number of international opportunities that are possible there. So, in this video, U.S. Military News Channel will discuss the A-10 Warthog for Ukraine. Watch this video until the end and give your opinion. Just days after the Kremlin launched its unprovoked and unwarranted invasion of Ukraine, discussions circulated online on how just a handful of Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II ground attack aircraft could have destroyed the slow-moving Russian columns advancing on Kyiv. Armchair experts on Facebook and Reddit suggested the GAU-8 30mm cannons and AGM-65 Maverick missiles could have decimated the Russian ground forces. An Air National Guard A-10C Thunderbolt II pilot told the Aviationist.com in March, quote, It's not that easy. It has to be a pretty permissive environment for us to roll in and do a gun run. That doesn't happen much anymore. Yes, it is true that the A-10 was initially developed to offset the massive imbalance in the number of tanks that the Warsaw Pact had over NATO. Many military strategists expected a massive invasion of Soviet armor advancing through the Fulda Gap in Germany. The A-10 was considered ideal for conducting low-level strikes to counter such an invasion. However, the heavily armored A-10 wasn't expected to survive endless runs against the Soviets. The lack of survivability has only gotten worse as anti-defense systems have improved. In many ways, the A-10 Thunderbolt II, which first flew half a century ago in early 1972, has more in common with the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt than with the fifth generation F-35 Lightning II, which can strike ground targets with total impunity from great distances using precision standoff weapons. That could explain why in March, just days after the invasion began, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall dismissed any suggestions that the A-10 could head to Ukraine. Quote, I'm not aware of any current plan or even any discussion of a plan to field or provide A-10s to the Ukrainians, Kendall said during a roundtable with reporters at the Air Force Association's Air Warfare Symposium. The sentiment was echoed by Air Force Chief of Staff General C.Q. Brown. In the nearly five months of fighting, Russia has been unable to achieve air superiority, and its air defense systems have been largely underwhelming. Perhaps those early assessments that the A-10 wouldn't be up to the job were wrong. While the environment on the ground isn't quite permissive as some A-10 pilots would desire, it seems that the Russians' tactics have been pretty poor. More than once, columns of Russian tanks have rolled up largely unprotected and come under attack from ground forces. Some would suggest it as a perfect opportunity for A-10s, even in the 2020s. And that fact could explain why Kendall was singing a slightly different tune this month and wasn't quite quick to dismiss the idea of transferring A-10 Warthogs, the colorful moniker the jets have earned from the pilots who fly them, to Ukraine. 
At the same time, however, Kendall said that the A-10, quote, is not a system that we will need against the kinds of adversaries we're concerned about most now. Is, is not a system that we're going to need against the kinds of adversaries we're, 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 we're concerned about most now. Um, we have older systems like AWACS and JSTARS, which were designed... In March, Kendall and other officials laid out a plan that called for the U.S. Air Force to retire 150 aging aircraft, including 21 A-10 Warthogs currently in service with the National Air Guard. Moreover, the service has sought to cut 42 Cold War-era ground attack aircraft in its fiscal year 2022 budget. But Congress ultimately blocked those retirements in the National Defense Authorization Act. Kendall told reporters in March, quote, while the A-10, from the point of view of delivering munitions, would be terrific for killing Russian tanks, etc., its survivability would be in question. That's one of the reasons that we need to move beyond the A-10, because we're worried about high-end threats now. In many ways, the A-10 could be well-suited to the current fighting in the Donbass region. The A-10 was designed to survive even after heavy damage, and can operate from austere airfields. More importantly, the Ukrainian Air Force continues to operate the far less capable Su-25, which suggests that slow-flying ground-attack aircraft still have a place in the modern conflict. The Fairchild A-10 Thunderbolt II was made for close air support. The A-10 Thunderbolt II is known as a tank-kill aircraft. It can maneuver for long periods of time, at subsonic or low speed, is armed with an automatic cannon with high destructive power, and is capable of withstanding enemy attacks on the ground. As a tank destroyer, the A-10 Thunderbolt II is armed with the GAU 8A Avenger 30mm or 1.18 inch cannon, the most powerful aircraft gun ever built, which can fire 3,900 rounds per minute. The A-10 Thunderbolt II has eight missile or bomb hardpoints on the wings, and three hardpoints on the fuselage. As a ground attack aircraft, the A-10 is capable of carrying armaments weighing up to seven tons. The aircraft is armed with Maverick AGM-65BC air-to-ground missiles, AIM-9LM Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, and 70mm LAU-68 rocket launchers. To divert enemy missiles, the A-10 is equipped with a decoy.